Good morning. Um, my name is Isidore Knox. I'm the director of the Office of Eco Opportunity, and I'm really happy uh, to have you all here with me today. I'm going to try to introduce the panel. I think I know everybody, so I should be okay with doing that. I guess I'll go to my far left, and we have our, <laughs> my far left, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> um, we have our, our Dane County executive elect, I guess, uh, Joe Parisi. So, Joe. And next to him, we have our chief deputy, Jeff Hook. And then we have our um, new DA, Ozane. Uh, next to him, we have Judge O'Brien. And next to me, we have, I guess, our acting county executive. <laughs> Kathleen Falk. Uh, on, on the other side of me, we have our distinguished speaker today, uh, Mr. Mark Maurer from the <laughs> Sentencing Project. Next to Mark, we have Celia Jackson. She's our chair of our Dane County Implementation Team. Next to her is Dr. Al Felice. He's our vice chair of our implementation team. And, and next to Al, we have our clerk of courts, uh, Mr. Esqueda. Um, again, we're really happy to have you here this morning. Um, this conference is brought to you as a result of our collaborative grant funded by the Office of Justice Assistance and the American Bar Association, and in addition to sponsorship from the Dane County Executive's Office. Um, a few things I'd like to say. Over two years ago, there were several reports that were published regarding how Wisconsin and Dane County in particular had some of the highest incarceration rates and disparities for persons of color in the criminal justice system. While Many people in our community were su su surprised by these statistics. There are many persons of color in our community as well as some of our criminal justice practitioners that probably were not as surprised. Uh, at that time, the Dane County's Equal Opportunity Commission felt it was imperative that Dane County begin to address this issue that's impacting our community. The EOC sent a letter to County Executive Falk asking her how she was going to address this problem and we offered some solutions. One thing about my boss that I've learned over the last 10 years is she's very adept at restating the question and asking how are we going to, as a community, going to address this issue. So what she did, her and the chair McDonald of the county board directed the EOC to form a task force, and that essentially started a long journey down this particular path towards uh, justice here in Dane County. Um, one of the things that I'm fortunate to do is, on occasion, have an opportunity to introduce my boss, Kathleen Falk. Um, I know I'm not going to have that opportunity as much, but I just wanted to um, appreciate this one moment um, of doing this. She's a great person, and she really pushes us hard to solve community problems. So I'm going to just um, introduce Kathleen Falk. Thank you, Isidore. Uh, let me start uh, by uh, let, asking you to join me. I, Isidore and Colleen. Colleen, where are you? Raise your hand. Uh, they have just taken up uh, this work with a vengeance. Uh, it needed to be, but they have provided the energy and the smarts uh, to, to get us where we are here today, and including going out and finding the grant money to put this day on and the work that will continue from it. Would you join me in thanking Isidore and Colleen for their <laughs> incredible work? Um, 
It, it's also great to have uh, our distinguished uh, guest here today with us for the next couple of days because he's going to be meeting with a number of us over the next couple of days and uh, uh, continuing to give his advice to us on what we ought to do different and better here in Dane County. But when your when your guest from Washington D.C. Uh, says it's more interesting in Wisconsin than Washington D.C., you know the world is topsy turvy. Uh, so we're we're really honored to have you here. Um, it's also great to be in a, a room full of people who just do so much in our community. Um, you know, we have our, our ju judges are here, our district attorney, uh, our sheriff, um, our public defender's office. I look around the room and I see all of you leaders um, every day in our community that are making the difference and just won't let go of it. Sister Heffernan is never going to let go of this. Barbara McKinney is never going to stop working. And as I look around you, that's why I have confidence that we will make changes here and can and can be a better community because you are a room full of people who don't stop working. And that's what it takes. Um, in my f few minutes here, before I get the honor of turning this over to our next fabulous county executive elect, uh, Joe Parisi, um, I thought um, it might be helpful, because we'll spend the rest of the day figuring out what we can we do better, just a few minutes for, for what we have done a little bit uh, in the last 14 years for me um, because it's also, you know, as I look forward to the last week in office, um, full of lots of uh, closure and reflecting of what could I have done better, different, or more of. Um, but when, when you first elected me 14 years ago, I have to remind you a little bit about what the world was then. We had an overcrowded jail, um, about 1,300 or so, a little short of that, people in our jail on any given day. We had a conservative county board who wanted to build three more floors of jail, even though we had just opened a few years earlier the new jail. That would have cost us at that time in those dollars another $30 million to construct, and in addition, another about $3 million a year to operate. I seen head shaking you flash back to what that world was like. Governor Thompson was governor and building prisons across the state as fast as you could. And, and anybody who was not uh, uh, wanting to put more people in prison or jail was completely soft on crime and out of the mainstream. That was the context. Well, I had run for office because I wanted to change the welfare system and help moms and dads and kids succeed. And I knew what the things were that got in the way of that. It's, we all know what those are. Poverty, drug addiction, mental illness, it's not rocket science to know why families don't succeed. So I knew when you elected me what I could do with the half of the county budget, which is what we allocate to human services in terms of empowering people and providing money for addiction and helping kids have good lives. I, we know what to do there. But what I didn't realize 14 years ago was that of your hard-earned tax money that I know you would prefer going into investing in kids and, and mental health and addiction problems that 60, at that time, about $60 million was going into our jail. And like you, if our jail was working to produce successful people to come out of it, then that's money well spent. But as I began to be educated by our, our sheriff and our, our sheriff's department, um, I quickly came to the conclusion that your money wasn't particularly being well spent for the sheer fact of about a third of the offenders, Chief Deputy Hook and his fabulous team at that table back there know their first names because they are the frequent flyers. They continue to come in and out of the system. And we're spending about $22,000 a year for, for no better results. And that hard-earned dollars, just think what it could do in a community to empower people in a positive way. So I quickly uh, vetoed uh, uh, th the expansion of the jail by three floors and then, then got to work. What are we going to do so we can have a safer community and spend our money in a more successful and positive way than continuing to have the same people in and out of our jail without changing their lives and making it better or our community safer? And thanks to a lot of people in this room and people who aren't, lots has been done. But we started by first systematically looking at those 1,200 or so. Who's in there? Well, 
quickly saw that there was a disproportionate number of people with mental illness. That table back there knows these statistics well. I thought we stopped putting mentally ill people in jail back in 18th century England. I was astonished to learn what you here all know. So we began to put money into criminal alternative sanction programs. That problem was dramatically reduced as a result of our putting dollars into mental health and some money for people like the City of Madison Police. So when they picked up somebody who was off their medications, instead of going straight to jail, you went to your public health nurse and you got back on your meds. Programs that are not rocket science and work. Then quickly saw that there was a disproportionate number of young Latino offenders in our jail. So I asked the sheriff, do they offend more than the rest of us? And the answer was, well, no. Well, then why are they in jail more than the rest of us? The language barrier problem and reading things like simple uh, bench warrants or, or, or traffic tickets. So we quickly uh, provided $50,000 a year to Centro Hispano. And uh, that, that problem basically solved because they then uh, work with people of, of uh, uh, Spanish speaking and uh, tell them what these tickets meant and you don't get picked up on a bench warrant. Lucia was the head of Centro Hispano then and did a fabulous job creating that program. Um, created a, an, another program for um, young uh, African American offenders called Cool Choices. Um, makes a difference. Uh, systematically went through the jail population and looked at those pockets where I could go to the 500,000 people in Dane County and say, give me a chance to do something different. And let's see if it works and you are safe and we have saved you money and we've actually turned lives around. And out of that long process of, these, of trying these programs um, and, and most importantly, having the political will in that climate of if you're not putting more people in jail, you are out of the mainstream of what the public wants. Um, we finally came to the really the hardest, hardest category and that is those who are most commonly in our jail, repeat alcohol offenders, for which half of the sentenced inmates in our jail on any given day are there for repeat alcohol crimes. And so we took that, we did this same kind of homework approach, looked at, figured out what we could do smarter or different, created a program called Pathfinders. We are now in about year seven or so. It is incredibly successful where we provide some jail time and alcohol and drug treatment and nine months of that. Uh, people are employed at the end of it and not reoffending. So these, these examples of quickly summarizing these 14 years of trying to do something different, to be smarter on crime so that who is in our jail reflects who we are as a community, but most importantly, becomes a place of hope that we can change lives has, has really worked in our community. We are now, for lots of reasons, crime is down, as, as the district attorney will, will tell us and the sheriff, but for lots of reasons, I can look at you and say that 14 years later, we have a hundred and over a hundred thousand more citizens in Dane County than we did then, but our jail population is as low now as it was 14 years ago. Thanks to all of your efforts, thanks to all of us willing to take on the politics of being smart on crime, you'll recall it cost me an attorney general election where three million dollars was spent in TV ads telling people around the state that in Dane County, Kathleen Falk lets people out of jail. Your families will not be safe. So thanks to all of you being willing to say we can try something different. We are on that path. We have a long ways to go. But I'm convinced that given your good political will and work and the half a million people in Dane County who know that there must be a smarter way than what we were doing because what we were doing was not working, uh, that they are willing to give these courageous, these courageous elected officials um, the, the, the confidence um, and encouragement to continue to do this work. So where we are right, right now, uh, Governor Doyle commissioned uh, this very important uh, task force report in 08 
uh, Chief uh, Ray, uh, District Attorney Blanchard were two key leaders on that. They issued a comprehensive set of reforms of what county governments all across the state ought to do to change the disproportionate number of minority in uh, county jails as well as the state prisons. As far as I know, we're the only county that take up this cause. Where are the other 71 counties? Uh, but we're taking it up and we took it up from the get-go. Uh, thanks to, again, Isidore and his team and Celia Jackson, who will be speaking in a moment in the fabulous uh, uh, task force that took up that work with a vengeance and made 80 recommendations to the decision makers, policy makers in Dane County. And we have been whittling away at that list. Uh, Celia now chairs also the implementation team and many of you members are here. Thank you for all of your work. Uh, we will continue. Speak of Chief Ray, there he is. Timely entrance. Um, so we are taking up each of those recommendations uh, and methodically working them through. So we put into this year's budget a number of the recommendations. I'll give you just uh, two examples. One is, one of the recommendations was a, a barrier, and especially for minority citizens who land in jail for having lost their driver's license and, and been driving without a valid driver's license. Well, again, when you think about it, is, is that a good use for a jail? So there's got to be a smarter and better way. And of course, if you don't have your driver's license, you can't get to work and all those sorts of things that keep people down in a community. So we went to the YWCA and said, here's a small chunk of money. Will you work with uh, people who have lost their driver's license so they can get them restored? They don't need to be in a jail. They need to be working. Um, that kind of initiative. Put a little money in so that Colleen and Isidore could go out and get more grants. They have. Again, today's conference is one of those results but I'm just really tickled and pleased to say thanks to their hard work. Uh, we were just notified by the State Office of Justice Assistance that we're getting $88,000 to help African American inmates in our county jail when they leave the jail have better mental health, drug and alcohol resources uh, to help them succeed when they've gotten out of jail. Tremendous improvement in adding capacity to our system here in Dane County. Thanks Isidore and Colleen for that great work. But there is way more to do, and that is my segment, segue, uh, to introducing our new county exec elect, uh, Joe Parisi. Uh, he is no stranger to county government. He was our county clerk uh, for many years. He's been a fabulous state legislator uh, for many years, and his hallmark of his service as a state assembly person has been leading on criminal justice reform issues. Uh, so he not only comes well equipped with the knowledge of these systems that we are all changing, but with a tremendous value system and a tremendous commitment to continuing the work we have all been involved in here. Um, we are so fortunate to have him as our next county executive. It is with great pleasure that we welcome uh, Joe Parisi. Good morning, everyone. And I just have to start by thanking County Executive Falk for providing me and all of us here with such an incredible foundation moving forward. We don't have to start, we just get to keep going and we get to build on her successes. And I know I speak for everyone in this room when I say we, we just can't thank you enough. Thank I'd also like to say how exciting it is to be sitting next to Mark Maurer. Now this guy, I unfortunately, well fortunately or for better or worse, I'm in session today so I have to leave so I'm not gonna be able to be here for his talk. Um, but before I decided to run for county exec, um, I was spending my nights and weekends working on a graduate degree in criminal justice and I read a lot of this guy's stuff and he is good so you're, you're in for a treat today. It's, it's, it's gonna be really exciting. Um, you know, racial disparities, and everyone in this room knows this, is one of the most pressing issues facing not only our community here, but our society at large. And you, know, you all know the statistics. Um, in Dane County, African Americans comprise about 4.5% of our population, about 45% of the jail population. Statewide, African Americans are about 7% of our population, um, about 50% of our incarcerated population. Um, and as, as Mr. Maurer, I'm sure we'll get into, um, and as many of you know, this began in the 80s and 90s with the war on drugs and the war on crime, um, and which escalated our entire prison population, 
but it exacerbated the racial disparities that we're dealing with now. And today, the driver of our prison populations and our racial disparities has changed. It's no longer, well, I hope I'm getting this right, <laughs> it, it's no longer the, the initial entry, but it's revocations when people are on probation. And that's the place, one of the places that we really, really need to focus. And I, I know a lot of people in this room do focus. I look at my friend Jerome Dillard, with whom I've worked a lot in the legislature and really look forward to working with on the county level, who does so much work in the community with all of you in trying to help people succeed once they're out of prison and once they're out of incarceration. And it, we all know the ramifications are many. And the first step is for us to have awareness beyond this room and beyond those of us who work in this field um, so that everyone knows just how serious this problem is. But not only that it's serious, but that it can be solved. And what we need is exactly what we're seeing happen right now. We need a strategic plan. We need to address, we need to identify the issues, which is being done, and then we need a plan to, to get from point A to B. Um, you know, in this plan, it includes providing opportunities. It includes treatment, alcohol, drug, as, as Kathleen Falk um, commented. Um, people with mental illnesses need support in the community because another thing that was going on in the 80s and 90s, as we deinstitutionalized the treatment of people with mental illnesses, we did not put adequate resources in the community to help those people, and now they've been, so many have been reinstitutionalized in our jails and prisons. So that's another big piece of this. You know, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be taking over at a time when so much in this field is going on and there's so much expertise and so much momentum, and I'm committed to, to addressing this issue. I'm committed to working with you. Um, I believe when we look at the reentry process, if someone is willing if they, want a t if they want a second chance and they're willing to do the work, we need to provide that ladder of opportunity for them to have a second chance. And they can, they can save us tax dollars, they can become hardworking citizens, and as County Exec Falks stated, and as we all know, it makes our community safer. Simply locking someone up and then letting them out without the support systems for them to access doesn't work, it costs us more money, it makes our community less safe. So I'm excited to be here. I'm excited about what we can do moving forward. And I, I thank Kathleen Falk and everyone else again so much for all the work that you've done to get us to where we are now. And if everyone in this audience for all the work we're going to continue to do to address this problem. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I can't be here today because of the legislative session I have to go to, but I hope you have a wonderful conference. And I thank you all so much for the work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Um, now um, we're going to just have a few comments from the different um, members of the Dane County Criminal Justice Council. Uh, we'll start. Um, unfortunately, County Board Chair McDonald cannot make it today. So we're going to uh, start with Chief Deputy Hook to say a few words from the Dane County Sheriff's Office. Thank you and welcome. Um, on behalf of Sheriff Mahoney, I would like to thank you all for being here and again welcome you. Uh, Sheriff Mahoney takes the, the issue of uh, racial disparity very, very seriously and uh, he would certainly be here if he wasn't in Israel today. So, um, but, the, but I do wanna point out the fact that he takes this very seriously by the fact that he insisted that his entire command staff be here and be available and be a participant in this conference today Sitting back at the back table underneath the camera is uh, Captain Jan Tetzloff, who is in charge of our Administrative Services Division, Captain Rochelle Anhalt, who is in charge of our Field Services Division, Captain Jeff Tischer, who's in charge of our Security Services Division, and Captain Tim Ritter, who's in charge of Support Services. We are all here today available. If you have uh, anything that you would like to discuss that is uh, Sheriff's Office related, please, we're all here to uh, answer any questions or discuss any issue that you would like to discuss today. Um, like uh, County Exec-Elect Parisi stated, the uh, population of African Americans in the Dane County Jail is at today, when I looked up the numbers, it was 45.7%. Even though County Exec uh, 
Falk stated that our jail population has been reduced significantly in the last number of years. We've actually come down three to 400 people every day, but our rate of percentage of African Americans incarcerated out of that number is virtually unchanged. So we've made a lot of progress in a lot of different areas, but we have not really made any progress in this area. And there have been many, many of you that have been working on this issue for years, and this is not an issue that we will solve today, but we must keep working on it. Um, again, thanks for being here, and I look forward to working with all of you. Thanks. Next, we'll have a few words from uh, DA Ishmael Ozane. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to say that you know I'm proud to be uh, a lifetime member of Dane County and a resident of Wisconsin. Uh, now, more than ever, obviously, with everything that's sort of happening and, and the response that this community has had to everything that's moving around us. But in 08, I was not uh, in the position I am now, uh, but I was at Department of Corrections. So in 08, I was working on these issues from that position as executive assistant and then moving on uh, to help implementate uh, Act 28, which were sentencing reforms and other uh, reentry efforts that Governor Doyle at the time had put into place. And I, I think now we had just started to reach a tipping point. When you look back, we had the last three years where our prison population had started to decrease, the first time in history that that's happened. That is, and I can't say that it was Act 28. I can't say that um, you know, all of my efforts were a result of that, but I was a part of that. And if we can continue that into the future, any effect you have in the criminal justice system, any effect you have in the prison system will affect racial disparities. That's the easy part about it. The hard thing is keeping the focus, keeping it in the forefront, and as uh, was noted when Governor Doyle received a, a national award regarding racial disparities, it's something that people did not want to talk about and probably don't necessarily want to talk about. And to keep it in the forefront, to keep people's eye on the prize, so to say, is the important thing. Because if you keep it in the forefront, you have to deal with it. It's no longer so somewhat of a, a a secret that's not really a secret. And we are better people if we can have a system that is fair on all levels. And it's gonna take every member of the community, every member of leadership in every area for us to affect change. But what you are doing here and what I am now a part of at the county level is, is incredible. You are keeping the focus, you are keeping us moving forward, and even though we are having trying times and we may have a budget that's coming out of this administration that repeals uh, Act 28 altogether, there is still hope if at this level we can keep reentry moving forward and keep people from going back into the system once we actually get them back into our community. So thank you, and I am proud to be a part of this. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Judge Sarah O'Brien that's here representing the Dane County Courts. Chief Judge Faust um, is not in Israel. He's in the courthouse, and uh, he, he does expect to come um, later today, but he asked if I could take a minute to welcome you all on behalf of the courts. Um, I am very happy to say that our chief judge is very interested in this topic. He understands the depth of the problem, and he is certainly very concerned with doing what we can within the court system to uh, reverse the effects of racial disparities. Uh, it, it, it was difficult for a lot of judges to get here because this was scheduled on fairly short notice, but there, um, Judge Genovese and Judge Gaylord and I will be here all day, and as I said, Ms. Uh, Judge Faust will be coming in and out. 
I was a member of the Dane County Task Force on Racial Disparities that put out this report recently on what we can do to um, reverse this problem. And I showed up the first day to the first meeting with my dog-eared copy of Mark Maurer, the Sentencing Project's report, saying this is the guy that knows how to get this done and we need to talk to him, we need to follow his directions, we need to get help from him in order to solve this problem. I'm one of those weird kind of people that think that you are a rock star. And so I really came today only in hopes of getting this autograph before the day is out. So I'm just so excited to meet you, and I know we're going to learn a lot today. Thank you. And now we'll hear from Clerk of Courts, um, a Clerk of Courts, um, Mr. Escoida. Hi, I'm Carlo Muskay, the Clerk of Court for Dane County. Um, again, there's not too much I can say to follow up on what's already been said about the privilege it is to participate in this process. Um, the Clerk of Court's department is an entity that all of the other folks that you've already been introduced to in the system kind of feeds into. Um, we don't have a great deal of policy making power, but a lot of the decisions that we do make do have an impact on this um, particular issue. When we get to the panel discussion, I can talk about some of the things that we've done in my department to try to address this issue uh, from the standpoint of making sure that our jury selection process is as fair and representative as possible, and also some things we've done on the collections front that I think have had a positive impact on the problem that we're all trying to address here. Um, I've had actually a long-standing concern about this issue. My job before getting elected to this office in 2007 was with the City of Madison Police Department. And one of the things that we're interested in checking out there, I, I serve there in sort of an IT number crunching capacity. And one of the outstanding questions that we had was about um, any kind of racial disparities in traffic stops, and particularly traffic stops that did not result in a citation. And all credit to Chief Ray for letting this uh, this investigation go forward at an early stage before there was even a hint of a mandate to do so statewide. Um, we developed a, a tool for officers to use in their vehicles to um, record non-sighted stops uh, where no such record keeping had taken place before. And um, what we did find is that the, the non-sighted stops in terms of the um, the proportion of people of different races stopped exactly matched those for sighted stops. And um, we were pleased to see that there was not a disparity there. So going back about six years, seven years um, in that process, um, it was, a, it was a, a process and a procedure I was very proud to be a part of. Um, again, more detail about my office's role in the process when we get to the panel discussion. And again, I'm very happy to be here, and I'm pleased to see that you're all very interested in this problem as well. <laughs>